This is a top 10 video I've been wanting to do since way back when I did my top 5 best and worst JRPG minigames video. So I'm glad to finally be able to show you guys some of the best fishing minigames out there. I'll preface this by saying I'm primarily a JRPG guy, so the majority of these games are going to be JRPGs. However, it doesn't mean that great fishing minigames from other genres won't appear on the list. If you enjoy these videos, remember to like, subscribe, and turn notifications to all so you won't miss the next video. Now let's grip our rods, grab our tackle boxes, and count down the top 10 fishing minigames of all time. Number 10 We're starting things off with a bit of an outlier. Every year in December, Star Trek Online holds its Winter Wonderland event, and with it comes the awesome Klingon Ice Fishing minigame. Unlike us Boktog humans, Klingons wear badass gauntlets on their arms and punch through the ice to grab their catch. This minigame involves catching a bunch of gummy fish of all sizes and sacrificing them to summon a giant gummy serpent known as the Koskari. And when I say all sizes, I mean all sizes. Klingon ice fishing is always a blast and is something I look forward to every single year, so of course it had to make it here to start off the list. Number 9 Shenmue 3 is a game that unfortunately disappointed a lot of the fans of the franchise, but one thing even the haters can't deny is how well the addition of a fishing minigame fits the series. In Shenmue 3, you're constantly needing cash for food and rent, and one of the best ways to make a living is by fishing. After renting your rod and tackle, approach any area marked by a fishing sign and cast away to your heart's content. The music and atmosphere of this game is super chill and relaxing, and it just makes the fishing that much more enjoyable. Using slightly innovative controls, after casting, you've got to rotate the right analog stick to reel in, and it just feels great. Hone your skills and get good enough to win the fishing rally, and get yourself a special fancy fishing jacket for your troubles. Now I got my wish, cause I know that I'm a gay fish, gay fish, gay fish, yo. Motherfucking gay fish, oh, yeah. I'm a fish, yo. Number 8. Sea of Stars was an incredible throwback to classic JRPGs like Chrono Trigger and Super Mario RPG. But one thing I was excited for as soon as I got my hands on it was the fishing. The fishing in Sea of Stars is fairly simple, but very fun. With a ton of different areas with different types of fish and rewards for catching said fish, I was always happy to take a break from my journey and overfish the hell out of each pond. Ingredients in Sea of Stars are very important as you've got to make food to heal with, so fishing becomes very useful when you need to cook something up. For being simple yet exciting and super useful, the fishing in Sea of Stars lands in the number 8 spot. Number 7 Dark Cloud 2 is one of, if not the greatest game on the PlayStation 2. Offering a ton of great gameplay, side content, and mini games, one of which is, of course, a great little fishing game. Now, the fishing in Dark Cloud 2 isn't the most innovative. But what gives this game bonus points is the fact that you get an aquarium that can be used to both breed and battle your fish in order to create faster, stronger fish. After meddling with the genetics of your fish and creating the ultimate life form, you can then enter it into the finny frenzy. What's the finny frenzy, you ask? Well, it's only the most high-octane fishing race of all time. So take your steroid and sarm-loaded fish and get ready to beat some ass at the races. I love this silly little minigame, and it just adds such a great extra element to Dark Cloud 2's fishing, which is why it stands strong here at number 7. Number 6 Now, I'm not a big fan of Ubisoft, nor am I a big Far Cry guy, but there was something special about Far Cry 5. Taking place in the United States after a massive cult takeover, you and your team are sent to arrest the cult leader in hopes that it'll put an end to the insanity. Instead, you and your team end up in the direct center of a cult-driven civil war. While you try liberating the outpost from the enemy, sometimes you need to take a break from all the action and venture to sit back, smoke some weed, and get in some good old fishing. The fishing in Far Cry 5 is really well done. The controls are great, there's a good variety of different areas you can fish in, and fish you can catch. There's an entire side story related to fishing that will net you the best rod in the game. But probably my favorite thing about Far Cry's fishing is that this game is completely playable in co-op. Not only can you and a buddy go out on a nice relaxing fishing trip, but you can be fleeing an enemy on your boat, and as they're in hot pursuit, your buddy can cast a line and go trolling down the river. I had an absolute blast playing Far Cry 5 with friends, and the fishing in this game has always been something that brings me back to it. For all these reasons, Far Cry 5 latches on at number 6. 
Number five. The Breath of Fire series has a ton of great fishing minigames, but for the sake of this video, I only wanted to narrow things down to one game per series on the list. It was a close call between Breath of Fire 3 and 4, but I feel like the overall gameplay as well as the usefulness of the fishing in Breath of Fire 3 takes the win here. Breath of Fire 3's fishing starts off having your standard cast and reel fishing gameplay, but as you learn the nuances, reeling patterns, and rhythms, you begin to realize that there's actually quite a bit of depth to this game's fishing mechanics. You see, the game uses what it calls techs. The more difficult the tech you use while reeling, the bigger and better fish you have a chance of catching. Techs are all based on timing and rhythm, so they take a lot of practice to get good at. I love the level of detail put into designing this minigame. Not only that, but it was much easier figuring out which lures and locations to use in order to try for certain fish, unlike in Breath of Fire 4. All this on top of the fact that your catches are incredibly useful in Breath of Fire 3 made it land in the number 5 spot with ease. Some rare fish like the whales for example are essentially this game's version of a mega elixir. Breath of Fire 3's fishing minigame is so damn good, in the PSP version they made it possible to turn on the game and go straight to fishing. Now that's some good fishing! Number 4 We've already got some heavy hitters when it comes to great fishing minigames in this video, but this next entry changes things up drastically from the previous entries. The Yakuza series is known for having a ton of fantastic and fun minigames, but up until Yakuza 6, the fishing minigames have been pretty lackluster and downright disappointing. But with Kiryu spending a lot of his time in the small coastal town of Onomichi, they decided to go balls out with their new fishing minigame. Much like in Far Cry 5, Yakuza 6 has its own little fishing side story involving an injured fisherman needing help to keep his business afloat. After telling him you're willing to help out, he doesn't hand you over a rod and tackle box. Oh hell no! He gives you a spear gun and a wetsuit and drives you out to the ocean where you play the most high intensity fishing minigame of all time. That's right, in Yakuza 6, the fishing minigame is an on-rail shooter where you've got to spear as many fish as possible and take on several different giant sea creatures as boss fights. As you progress the side story, you'll gain access to better spear guns and level up to improve your lung capacity. From having everything from gallery shooting action to a revenge plot involving avenging the death of one of the character's fathers, Yakuza 6's fishing minigame breaks all the boundaries one would expect from a fishing minigame, which is why it lands so high up on the list. Number three. I love Dragon Quest, and I love fishing minigames, so when the two finally came together in Dragon Quest X, I was hooked. Not only does Dragon Quest X have a seemingly endless amount of places to fish, it also has a ton of different rods, lures, fish, and the fishing is turn-based combat, baby! How do you even beat that? Your lure determines your line's hit points, and your rod determines your critical reel rate. That's right! You can get crits in fishing. As you level up your fishing skills, you'll get more powerful reeling, you can loosen the rod to heal, and if you're close to reeling in the big one, but know you need to give it your all or your line will break before you can reel it in, you can use really reel to double your next reel in at the cost of half your current line HP. There's daily fish requests, which give better EXP and fish coins, which are used to buy special items. And these requests do an excellent job of making you want to explore all the different fishing locations so you can catch your quota. I absolutely love the fishing in this game and find myself firing it up some evenings solely for the purpose of fishing. If you're interested in checking out Dragon Quest X for yourself, be sure to check out my guide to playing Dragon Quest X in English for free. Number 2 Now, I'm not the biggest Zelda fan, but not even I can deny the greatness that is The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess's fishing minigame. Early on, you've got a basic bitch rod, but as you progress the story and get better at fishing, you'll get a series of different lures and can get around the fishing hole in a small canoe. It's gonna sound dumb because of how the Wii's controller was so waggly and gimmicky at the time, but the way they made the Wiimote and Nunchuck work like an actual fishing rod in real was absolutely excellent. Twilight Princess's fishing had the perfect atmosphere, controls, and equipment to be one of the best fishing minigames of all time. The fishing in this game was so good that I remember my grandparents, who could no longer go fishing due to their health conditions, coming over to my house to go fishing with me in Twilight Princess. This is an absolute core memory that I'll never forget, and one that I will always forever be grateful to this game for. I have never finished Twilight Princess, heck, I barely even like the game itself, but you can bet your ass that I love its fishing with all my heart. Number 1 
Well, there's only one game that could top Twilight Princess's fishing, and that is, of course, the greatest fishing game of all time, Final Fantasy XV. I did an entire video on how great of a fishing game Final Fantasy XV is, but it basically boils down to the overall experience. You see, Final Fantasy XV feels like a road trip with the boys, an adventure away from it all. With tons of campsites, fishing spots, and the open road, this game just has an unforgettable summer vacation vibe to me. There are a shitload of different lures, rods, and fish to get in this game, some of which can only be obtained after doing some hardcore side quests. There are even a few super rare boss type fish that you can catch along your journey. I think the best part to me was how throughout your journey, Prompto will take group pictures of everything you've done, and you can say a specific ones as your favorites. I'll never forget how at the very end of the game, after getting my heart absolutely ripped out by yet another bittersweet Final Fantasy ending, the final image of Noctis and the boys was us pulling in the dread grouper. It brought a smile to my face as I was fighting back the tears of that goddamn gut punch of an ending. Goes to show that as much as it sucks to lose the people and things we love, nothing's fully gone as long as we have the memories. Thanks a lot for checking out this video, I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please like, subscribe, turn notifications to all, and share it among friends. There are a lot of great fishing minigames, and I've likely missed some of your favorites, so please tell me about your favorite fishing minigames and memories with them in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Ooh, uh, 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 excuse me, I'm looking for sailors. I like to get to know ya so I can show ya Uh huh Put a hurt and know ya I like see I ya. No thanks Maybe next time Sailors yeah. Give me all your numbers so I can phone ya Excuse me Act a stink then call me over It's oh, yeah. just I need a glass of water I need to do this For my father Is it worth it? Let me work it I put my dick down Flip it and reverse it It's your primitive and wet yet Uh huh It's uh -huh. your primitive and wet oh, yet yeah. If you got a big fish Let me search it To find out how hard I got Have you ever heard the term fish? Have you ever heard the term? <laughs> ah, delicious.